we mean by foreground and background and how that leads into the visual hierarchy. When we look at a map or other things, if um, something is a darker, bolder color, it tends to stand out at us. So putting this, um, putting this outline around these boxes really helps them to stand out. And these darker lines that are on uh, bold colors tend to stand out more than, for example, a dotted line that's the same color or a light gray line that would kind of fade more into the background. And then we can also, of course, work with things like text size and that sort of thing. Um, but, we're, but sometimes for the most important things on the map, we're really looking for that sort of high contrast um, for the most important elements. And we're, then we're looking to de-emphasize other elements that aren't as important. One thing to remember in all this is that for our brain, color really jumps right out. So for example, if we were trying to differentiate between this point here and all the other points on the map, we could change the symbol to a, to a square instead of a circle, but probably much more effective is just using another color because it really pops out and, and um, goes right to the top of our visual hierarchy. And we can also see it in this example here where um, different colors are used here and they really stand out as being, uh, as being different than the other symbols. Um, another way to think about visual hierarchy is what we want to suppress or put into the background. So this is a map of world population or similar, and um, we have, in this case, the lines of latitude and longitude right on top of the map, and they're also quite thick. But perhaps we just want to um, fade that into the background by making those thinner, lighter colored lines. And not only that, but you might notice that we've also only put them on top of the ocean so that they don't go on top of the land like the United States here. They're only um, shown on the ocean, but in our mind, we can kind of continue these lines through and we understand they're underneath the, uh, underneath the display of the land there, but we're not really as concerned with those because we're not going to use this map in order to um, find one particular position on the surface of the Earth. So lighter, low contrast symbols are a good way to go in this case. So one good thing to do if you're trying to find, you know, figure out this whole thing of, you know, what to make, what to bring into the visual, um, visual front of your map and what to fade into the background, the foreground and the background, is look at other maps and see how they did it. For example, here Portland stands out with, by, by the red circle here. It also has um, a much larger font. We can also see some uh, cha variations in the roads, the thicknesses of the roads. And other things, we can just see a little bit of um, relief shading or hill shading here to kind of give an idea of where the hills are in this area. But it's really kind of faded off into the background. It's not the most important part of this map. Also, when you're putting your map together, pay attention to the detail. This would be an example of a poor legend here. Um, in this, we still have the name of the shape file for what the layer is which is never good form. And then um, this is the attribute from the attribute table that we're mapping, the population for uh, 2007. Also for these values here, they end up in really weird numbers like 122,212. And um, it's just hard to read and it's not, not very easy to de decipher the whole thing. But this better legend over here, instead of using the name of the shapefile, has changed it to US cities. Instead of the name, using the uh, name of the attribute, it's changed it to 2007 population. And then it's uh, changed these categories here so they're all nice round numbers, they all end in three zeros. And in that way, we're able to, um, the, the map user is able to use this in a more intuitive fashion. Here's an example here of a map that, that needs some work. So there's a lot of things that aren't great about this map. It seems like the arrangement isn't great. And, um, you know, the, the, the legend is taking up a lot of room. The, um, the scale bar is pretty large. The color scheme is almost like a rainbow color scheme going from, uh, going from red for low ho average household size to blue for high average household size. There's things on the map that we really wouldn't need to understand household size, like the rivers. Um, the states are good, but maybe not the rivers. And, um, and yeah, the whole, and we see a little bit of Alaska up here. There's a lot of different problems with that. So we can address some of these problems by, um, by making a layout that's much better. And wh what I would start with is kind of looking at the overall shape of the United States, seeing it's kind of more landscape than portrait and putting it into a landscape format, layout format. And that's what this is showing here. So now we have our title nice and clean up here. It kind of um, reflects the colors that we're using in the color scheme in the legend. 
We can see the map itself, all the rivers have gone away. We don't even draw in the boundaries of the counties, but we can clearly see where the boundaries of the counties are by changes in colors. Or if the colors are staying the same, it means there's two adjacent boundaries that have the same relative household size. So that's, uh, we're still getting a good idea of the pattern there. This, um, this information has been de-emphasized. This is a lot smaller and nicely labeled. And you can see compared with the last map that had 2.4100000. Now we just have 2.4. We've kind of um, reclassified those, and we've uh, and we're aware of our significant figures. We don't have to go out to uh, five significant figures here. And of course, there's always more improvements that you can make to a map.